On Friday, we got the jobs numbers out. They were a little lower than some people expected, and particularly when you look at the revisions from last month. What did you make of these jobs numbers? I don't think they changed anybody's picture very fundamentally of the economy. We've got a strong uh, economy. Inflation has come down. Inflation is not yet at uh, the Fed's uh, 2 percent uh, target. But uh, job growth, even on a slower basis, is remains considerably more rapid than underlying uh, population growth. So we've got a relatively strong economy. Well, and that raises the question of what does that mean for monetary policy? I mean, one question we ask sometimes of people at the Fed is, why are we talking about rate cuts right now when the economy seems to be doing so well and weathering this 5.5% rate? There's something very fundamental that has happened that I'm not sure that the Fed has fully realized. I think the neutral interest rate is way above the 2.5% that the Fed likes to uh, talk about. I think given the experience of the last several years that the market perceives normal inflation as probably being somewhat above two uh, percent, um, at least on a CPI basis. And I think that uh, huge deficits, more spending to come, substantial investments in renewables, substantial investments in resilience, substantial capital costs of various kinds associated with artificial intelligence, an aging population meaning more dissavers, less capital flow coming from uh, abroad. I think all of that means a much higher neutral real interest rate. So I think when the Fed compares 5 percent with the 2.5 percent neutral rate it sees, and people say that monetary policy is substantially restrictive, that's wrong. The neutral rate is much higher than that. And so monetary policy is res much less restrictive than is generally supposed. And the clear evidence of that is that we have this supposedly res really restrictive monetary policy and still have a quite robust uh, economy. So I think the Fed needs to be very careful uh, in its uh, judgments about what would be an epochal shift from the regime we've had for the last several years to a regime of easing uh, monetary policy. And they've moved substantially since uh, December. Market used to be expecting six cuts in uh, 2024. Now the market's expecting uh, three cuts. And the Fed's carried that off skillfully. There hasn't been much disruption or dislocation as that change has taken place. But I think that's going to be uh, there with us uh, for the next uh, while. And my own guess is probably that there's a little more adjustment to come. And the Fed may end up not deciding to cut quite as much as markets are now expecting. But I do think we need to get ourselves to an idea that uh, neutral rates are, are closer to having a four-handle than they are to having a two-handle. Uh, Larry, you, of course, are data-dependent just the way that Jay Powell's data-dependent, but consistent with the need for more data. We had Torsten Slock of Apollo this week come out and say he doesn't think there will be any cuts this year for some of the reasons you suggest. I I'm not asking you to commit on what will happen, but does that seem plausible to you? Yeah, I, I, I think I said on the show maybe a month ago, that several weeks ago, that there was a 15 percent chance that we wouldn't have cuts this year. I think, if anything, that 15 percent may have drifted slightly upwards. And uh, markets are kind of consistent with that if you look at uh, options uh, markets. So I think the base or presumptive case is probably that the next move is going to be down. But I think it would be a real mistake for people to regard that 
as a, any kind of uh, certainty. And I think the Fed has to be really quite careful uh, here because I certainly think uh, we're at least at the foothills of bubbles uh, to mix a metaphor. I, I don't think right now financial markets have the kind of bubbly characteristics that they famously had at uh, other times, but it's not that we're a million miles away uh, from that uh, either. And so I think that's something that also has to inform the policymaking process. So on the eve of the jobs numbers we got on Friday, we actually heard from President Biden in his State of the Union address. I, I'd be curious to hear what you, your take was on the economic portion of what he had to say. You know, I was glad to see the president being as vigorous and strong as he was. Certainly, the president looked like a man with a plan, indeed, a man with uh, many uh, plans and ideas and an energetic agenda going, uh, going forward. And that was a lot that I heard that I liked in terms of building and investing in the strength of the country's future economy for the benefit of the middle class. I do think we need to be very careful in our country about uh, a kind of populist uh, tradition in economics that lurches towards big deficits, towards anti-trade uh, international economic policies that focuses on economic uh, nationalism. And there's concern uh, there on short-sighted benefits to consumers that may ultimately reduce businesses' ability to invest in uh, the future. And so I think that's something we all need to be careful uh, about.